Hi, I'm Adam. I'm a youth worker in Brighton & Hove and I'm here to tell you a little bit about youth participation. So we all know what participation means in terms of taking part in something. Uh, youth participation is something that is a bit more distinct. It's something on its own and the reason for that is because the way that society is set up that actually makes it quite hard for young people to take part in things either because there's a law that says they can't do that or just because adults are so used to how they are set up. They may have their community meetings they want young people to go to, except that those meetings are always on when young people are in school, for example. So there's a lot of power that's held by adults and youth participation is the way that we end up breaking up some of that power and redistributing it amongst young people. So research shows us that young people who have the opportunity to participate, to be part of things uh, that are meaningful in their lives, have better outcomes. So people who um, take part might be less likely to engage in risky behaviour. Uh, they're more likely to be more active physically, which keeps them healthy mentally and physically. Uh, they have higher self-esteem. They uh, um, uh, show greater commitment to friends, families, communities, and are more likely to achieve healthy development. So more than it just being a good thing for young people, it's actually law. So young people are, uh, have the right, the protected right, to have their views heard and to influence decisions that affect them, according to the United Nations Convention of the Rights of the Child. It was the most universally adopted rights framework in human history, signed off in 1989. So understanding that young people should have power, understanding that young people have the right and understanding that it can be really good for young people's personal development and health and well-being. The other thing that we consider when we're talking about youth participation and why we would do it is just that services can be better, they can be more efficient. If young people are uh, the beneficiaries of a service and that service is talking to them about how to improve, how to make things more accessible, um, then inherently that service gets better. So there are these four main reasons why we would ask young people to be involved because they should have power, because they have the right, because it's good for them and because it breeds efficiency. So over the years, lots of people have thought about youth participation and written about it and come up with lots of ways to describe it. So one of the most popular ways is Hart's Ladder of Participation. So Roger Hart had this idea that he could describe youth participation as a bit of a ladder. So at the bottom you've got the things that aren't really youth participation but we might kind of dress up as youth participation, like manipulation, decoration, tokenism. Uh, it's not meaningful youth participation, it's just um, putting a badge on a young person and going, aren't you great? Um, as you go up the ladder, young people get progressively more meaningfully involved. So at, at rung four, assigned but informed might be uh, that adults are doing something, but at least they've told young people. Number five, consulted and informed. So we've asked young people uh, what their views are um, and then told young people what we're doing. At number six, adult initiated. It's the adults have started it and then they've shared the decisions with children. So the, we have the choices to make, let's make those together. Number seven, child initiated and directed. So young people are making the critical decisions. And number eight, where child uh, initiated, but sh and they share the decisions with adults. So actually they are in the lead at that point and uh, they have the power in that setup. So part of the issue that we might take with a ladder is it does imply that uh, the very top of the ladder might be a lot better than anything in the middle of the ladder. And actually the truth is more like different parts of the ladder can be more appropriate at different times for different young people and in different projects. So for example, if we had just started a youth club and we uh, wanted to get some ideas for what to do, it would be unreasonable to ask those young people who might be brand new to youth work to come and completely take charge, 
um, design everything, and uh, run the business, look at all the costs, look at all the you know insurances, look at all the the things that um, that they they might not have the experience to deal with. Actually, it might be much more appropriate at that stage for a brand new youth club to just be getting some flip chart out and ask the question, what kind of things would you like to do here? And then get your ideas and take those and uh, and then work towards those. And then over time, as relationships build, young people might gain the skills and experience and be able to, I don't know, run the tuck shop. They might be able to uh, become a young leader, eventually, you know, a key holder and then someone who is on the management committee. And then eventually maybe you do have more young people on the management committee than adults and you get higher up the ladder of participation. But the key thing is it, it depends where the appropriateness of that lies as to whether it's a good thing or not. For example, imagine at your first day at a new project, a new youth club, a new youth session, someone comes up to you and says, right, you're in charge. Actually, the responsibility, the pressure, um, the lack of support might be completely irresponsible in that setting and it might actually have the opposite effect in damaging your personal development and your confidence if you feel you're going to get something wrong uh, and would just be wholly inappropriate. Sometimes being meaningfully involved means different things for different people too. So if we were working with a group who had severe learning difficulties and communication issues meaningful involvement for them might be asking some very simple questions and gauging yes or no, does that sound like something you'd like to do? And that's very different from a very able-bodied uh, group of young people who, uh, who might have every opportunity to really clearly articulate what their needs might be. The same might be true of a group with very low literacy. Uh, would they be expected to sit down and physically write out a bid in the same way that another group might be? No, and that's okay, but how have they been meaningfully involved in the process? So what we're looking out for when we read through these youth-led grant program applications is not whether young people have written it and decided everything and uh, planned it all, got out the costings themselves, all those sorts of things. That might be wholly appropriate for a group that have been together for several years, have loads of experience, have good support, but it doesn't mean that it's necessarily greater, better participation work than the group of young people with extra barriers who really have put the effort in as far as they can. So, I hope that all made sense. If not, or if you have any examples you want to work through or clarifications, you have a fantastic team of youth workers and officers who will no doubt help answer any questions you have. Thanks.